Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernard from the BTN HD, and today we're going to be dealing with MDT 2013 and explain. So, explain what? So, uh, I'm going to be explaining the task sequence. I had a subscriber uh, kind of comment in one of my videos, and they were trying to find a video that explains what happens throughout the task sequence. Uh, don't get me wrong, MDT creates an awesome task sequence by default, and it everything works with no problem. But what does it really do? Uh, I took some time. And I went over all the nodes within the task sequence, and I took some notes. I wrote down some notes. I went online, and I found all the goodies and stuff. As well, I'm going to post it up my site so you guys could get a copy of it. So let's get started. So I'm going to try to explain this as best as I can. Uh, it's one of those things I, I know what it does, but explaining it is really hard. So let's take a look at my Windows 10 64 VL image, which is my volume license image. And this is a standard client uh, task sequence. So the first node is the initialization. So let's expand that. So you got gather local only. Now gather local only node gathers deployment configuration settings from local sources that apply to the target computer. For example, if you are deploying a Latitude D630, it's going to grab all the information for the D630, like the drivers, uh, whatever applications it's assigned to the database. If you're doing a database integration with make and model, that's where this node happens now this node what it uses it uses a zti gather.wsf um window script a lot of these nodes within the task sequence use the script folder this is how this works the next node is validate verifies that the target computer meets the specific deployment requirements conditions such as uh does it have enough memory uh does it have the the correct processing speed uh, does the image that you're going to be deploying to this desktop or laptop fit? Is the current operating system going to be a refresh or a capture? So that's what this node does. Uh, check BIOS, which is a basic input and output. Checks the basic input and output systems on the target computer and ensures that it is compatible with the operating system that you're deploying. Now, this one uses the ZTI BIOS uh, check.wsf. Uh, script to do this. The next one on the list is next phase. Now the next phase is you're going to see this one throughout the entire task sequence. There's a bunch of other next phases within the task sequence and they all do the same thing. Now this next phase uh, node basically updates the phase properties to the next phase in the deployment process. It determines the sequence in which each task must be completed. And this one uses the ZTI next phase dot WSF script. So let's expand the state capture. And the first one that we have here is generate application migration file. Now this node generates the ZTI app XML gen .xml file, which contains the list of file associations and applications that are installed on the target computer. Right? So basically, when you guys are picking the applications within the deployment time, this node right here, it's what's gathering that input that you're selecting to deploy it to your target computer. The next one is capture user state. Now, capture user state captures the user state for users profile that exists on the target computer. For example, if you guys are copying user profile and then you want to migrate it to your new machine, this is the node that you're going to be using. The next one is capture groups. Uh, this steps capture groups memberships of local groups that exist on the target computer. If you have a bunch, if you have like a specific security group and you want to capture that, this is a node that you could do it on. The next variable within the task sequence is captured network settings. Now, captured network settings gathers the network adapter settings for the target computer. It basically gathers if your uh, if the machine is grabbing a DSCP, is it grabbing the correct default gateway? This is what uh, this node does. It's actually using the ZTI IC config .wsf script to do this. The next node is the refresh only, and the next node is disable BDE protectors. Now, this one basically, if BitLocker is installed on the target computer, this task sequence disables the BitLocker protectors. The next node is Apply Windows PE. And this one right here prepares the target computer to start the Windows pre installation environment, the Windows PE environment. So that's what this node does. And another next phase, which basically does the thing it updates the phase properties to the next phase in the deployment process. And it determines the sequence in which each task must be completed. That's all it does. It basically, once once all this stuff is completed, once you got the generate application migration file, the capture user state, the capture group, the capture network adapters, and you you do everything within the refresh only node, it goes to the next phase, and the next phase is refresh only. So let's expand that. 
then you have a restart the computer. Now it's going to restart the computer. Once the target computer is restarted, this is when this node starts kicking in. Again, the pre-install, you have another gather local only. It's the same concept as the very beginning. And then once that gathers all that information, it's going to kick in into the new computer only. Again, it's going to validate the information, right? This is going to try and ensure that the minimum memory is set, processing speed, storage size, and all that stuff. Now, with the new update within MDT 2013, they added two nodes, which is format the partition in two ways. You can either do it with the BIOS setting. A lot of these machines have UEFI, so they added these two variables within the task sequence, the format and partition, to do it either way. So this is pretty awesome. So as you can see, within the BIOS settings, it creates the disk as a standard MBR, a master boot record. And if you if the machine is uh, set for UEFI, it's going to it's gonna format and partition as a GPT. So that's pretty awesome. And then the next one is copy scripts. Copy scripts basically copies all the deployment files used during the deployment process to your local hard disk on the target computer uh, so it can continue doing whatever it needs during the desktop mode, right? So once you're in the desktop mode, you got that nice little dialog box indicating what application or what's next. That's what this does. Then once that's done, you have the offline user state. If you're capturing anything, uh, if you're capturing any of your user profiles, this is where the node is at. Uh, I haven't done too much research on unload USMT Hive, so I don't know too much about it. I have to do a little bit more research, but most likely I'm going to update my blog post and you guys can catch that information. And the next node is the refresh only. And the next node is backup. And the backup node basically backs up the target computer before starting the operating system deployment. Now, this one actually uses the ZTI backup.wsf script within the script folder. The next one on the list is config. Now, the config node basically configures the unintend.xml file, the sibprep.ini file, or the unintend.txt file with the required property values that are needed to the operating system you are deploying to the target computer. Next one in the list is basically enable BitLocker offline. I haven't done too much research on this, but I'm assuming is if you guys are deploying stuff offline, off the grid, off the domain. The next one in the list is inject drivers. Uh, this one injects drivers that have been configured for the deployment to the target computer. So if you guys have any iSCSIs or network drivers, this is the one that actually imports that stuff into your image. The next one on the list is Applied Patches. Uh, this one installs updates to the image on the target computer after the operating system has been deployed, but before the target computer has been restarted. This one actually uses the ZTI patches.wsf script within your script folder to deploy. And then you have another next phase, which actually jumps into the next phase, and that would be the install. And this is where um, your operating system starts installing. And then once the operating system has installed, it goes to the next phase. And the next phase is the post install. Again, it copies more scripts inside the local drive so it can continue the process. It configures itself depending on what you guys are doing. And inject more drivers. It adds the Windows Recovery WinRE within your environment. The next phase, it goes to the next phase. It restarts the machine. And once it restarts the machine, it goes inside your state restore. Uh, it does another gather local only. Now, after the gather local only, you're going to get the post apply cleanup. And this basically cleans up unnecessary files after the installation of the image on the target computer. So it basically does a cleanup of all the crap that is it placed inside your machine. After that, you got a recovery from the domain. Uh, we'll verify the target computer has joined a domain. This basically uses the ZTI domain join.wsf script. This step tattoos the target computer with identification and version information. Uh, another opt-in to CEIP or WER. Again, I haven't found any information on that. I have to look up and, and do a post up on that on my site. Uh, Windows updates, if you enable this, if you enable this, it's going to push out any Windows updates you have. If you have a WSUS server in your, in your infrastructure, make sure that you uh, configure your custom settings.ini file to point to your WSUS server. Uh, if you have any installation applications, if you have any applications that you picked during deployment time, this is when uh, this kicks in. Uh, you have a post application installation. Uh, again, if you have a WSUS server or you want the Windows servers to push on the updates, it's going to push out the second batch. Uh, if you have any customization tasks, you can add them here. This right here will enable the BitLocker. 
uh, which configures the BitLock or drive encryption on the target computer if you use that. And you have restore user state will basically take whatever you grabbed at the very beginning. If you did capture the user's profile, this is the node that's actually going to start restoring it to the target computer. And you have restore groups. This right here with basically whatever groups you capture, like whatever specific security groups that you capture during the beginning, it's actually going to restore to the target computer. Uh, you have apply local GPO packages. I haven't played with this node a lot, but from my understanding, if you guys... Uh, have machines uh, off your domain and you want those machines to have group policies, you can actually create them and uh, add them into your deployment share and this nowhere will apply those GPOs uh, as a package offline. And uh, the last node is imaging. Uh, you have prepare only, you have SIP prep only, and you have the capture the image. So these are self-explanatory. This right will copy all the SIP prep files that it needed on the local target computer. Uh, it will add any mass storage devices uh, that it needs to make sure it captures it correctly. It, it's gonna execute the SIP prep. This right here will work here. It's gonna start talking to this node right here and it's gonna execute it. It's gonna apply to all the Windows PE, the, the pre-installation environment files, because then it's gonna reboot itself inside your deployment environment and then capture it. And that's when it starts executing. It's gonna apply the Windows PE. It's gonna restart the computer. It's gonna gather all the local information so it could go to the next thing. And then that's when it starts creating the Win file and then drop it into the location that you want it. And that's it guys. That is an explanation of a task sequence within the MDT 2013. I'm hoping I did a good job and you guys can understand it. If not, leave a comment right below. I'm willing to help you guys out as much as possible. All my notes that I took for these for this video, for this explanation, is going to be placed at my website. So make sure you guys grab a copy of that stuff. And again, if you got any questions, uh, leave it at the bottom. And don't forget about hitting that like button because it does support the video, as well as MDT. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out. Young